Yeah. You, so, do you want to first film that, or you want me to yeah. explain anything? Um, do you want to? You could. I, I will, could, real quickly. I could, or I could, I could jump in, and then you could, um... Film you? But, uh, well, we're live now. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, here, I'll, I'll I'll introduce it, and then 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 we'll switch camera, and then then you could explain it in more detail. All right. Okay. Is that is that cool? Okay. So, hi, it's Carlos. Uh, I don't know how to tag people yet. I'm still new to Facebook Live. I'm live. I can't make any mistakes. No, that's not true. Humans are allowed to make mistakes. Um, but when humans start doing things like pipelines that run through forests, we can't any longer make mistakes. See, I can make that mistake. But if this pipeline's put in, um, a lot of people will be threatened. And more than just people, the world that supports us is really under threat. Um, so I have a saying, you can't learn from a mistake that kills you. So we're honestly, that's what we're doing. We're creating all these things that now good people like Fairfax, who are, these are her props. My good friend just met her today, but she likes what I'm doing, and I like what she's been doing. She's an activist and um, holding the camera, so thank you, Fairfax. But um, we are about to go in, and I haven't done this yet with any of the pipelines, but I'm actually going to walk some of the length of it, and Fairfax and I are going to go in. We're right here, I believe, and this is uh, where we're about to enter into the trail. And the pipeline runs right along, and it runs through um, the Bald Pate Mountain pres Preserve, but is it really preserved if this is going to uh, be allowed to happen? So this is the Penny's Pipeline, the Black Snake, that uh, I think is about, I don't know, you could correct me, Fairfax, but 200 miles long, 150, and it, I believe it's from fracked gas. Yeah, it's closer to about um, 110, 120, 110? depending okay. upon what segments you cover. And it is part of um, the Marcellus Shale Gas? It's I'm bringing thinking. Marcellus Shale Gas from okay. Luzerne County, okay. Pennsylvania. Which is much more volatile, I've heard, too, because it's fracked. It has, like, higher concentration, concentrations of compounds. Yeah. Well, it's pretty, com yeah. it's combustible. Yeah, combustible, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the burn to keep us warm. But yeah, yes, yeah. So, so this is the route, and then... Um, did you want to explain it more? Do you? Yeah, yeah just real quickly. You're the expert. Okay. I'm just the guy walking. So, so Ball Cape Mountain is one of the most environmentally sensitive nature preserves Penny's Pipeline wants okay. to go through. It's actually officially designated an important bird area. And Penny, Penny's Ball Cape Mountain starts here on that map and ends at the other end. Okay. It's about a 2.7 mile crossing. And the thing about Penn East is it's not in the cleared right of way mm -hmm. for most of its route. Most of it is inside the forest, particularly over here, leaving a strip of trees in between the cleared right of way where the electric transmission lines are and Penn East would be. The effect is basically a bald paint mohawk. Instead of one strip through, there'll be two. Okay. And they want to go almost 200 feet into the forest. And this is really high-quality interior forest. Bald Pate is one of the best places in the state of New Jersey for, um, in, for migratory birds to breed. It has some of, the, some of the highest concentrations in the state and some of the highest biodiversity. Um, there are a lot of uh, New Jersey state-listed species mm -hmm. of birds breeding right in here that will lose their homes and habitat should Penn East come through. And one of the really bad impacts is not only will they blast this entire route, they have to blast to bury the pipeline, they will also you know, be clear-cutting forest, and they will move the forest edge, which would be here, they'll move it almost 200 feet deeper into the forest. So the impacts from forest edge effects tend to go 300 feet in. So the first 300 feet is already impacted now it'll be more like 500 feet mm -hmm. that will get very bad impacts uh, to some of these um, species of concern that are supposed to be conserved. The, the whole, the, this whole plate, ball paint was preserved back in the 1990s. It was one of the earlier preservation efforts, one of the very most important in central New Jersey. Uh, you can I want to get a view of it a little bit. Here's the transmission. Sorry, you could keep, we could keep going, All sorry. Right. <laughs> As we walk, I will tell Carlos there are state-threatened plants right in the mm -hmm. route that will be wiped out. There are 
uh, species of concern plants that will be affected and species of concern uh, breeding birds will lose their habitat. And just recently, the um, New Jersey threatens red-shouldered hawk that breeds at Baldpate has been confirmed to be breeding here. Even if they're not right in the proposed right away, they could easily feel the impacts. A cerulean warbler last year and just this year was confirmed breeding at Baldpate. Cerulean is one of the fastest declining songbirds in, in the United States. A very, very high priority species. And it, it not only migrates through here, but it breeds here. I believe it's probably the only place it breeds in central New Jersey. Hmm. Um, and you had said earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is one of the top five most important preserves in, in New Jersey because it has such a high rate of endangered species. Was that well, somewhere really, in that range? I'm not sure we can say it's the top five, but it has, the, in certain categories, the top one or two spot for, for important species uh, that we're concerned about, the biodiversity, the number of yeah. species that breed here. I think we are up into the 20s in the number of warblers that breed, in, okay. breed at Baldpate. I wish I could remember the exact number. Yeah. We just got... Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> we just got an extra species. Also, Canada warbler yeah. has been confirmed to breed here. Yeah. Um, we're finding good stuff, new stuff all the time. All right. Well, hopefully you keep finding new things and you don't keep finding things leaving because right. of the destruction. Yeah. So. And one of the points about this is um, there is no, there, there's so many birds breeding here that all the territories, all the suit suitable habitat is already used. It's already saturated. When they take out this forest, there will be nowhere else to go. And there isn't comparable good habitat elsewhere. Yeah. They, they just can't hop to the next hill. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's, yeah, these are homes. And, and that's something that I point out to other people when they, it, the whole logic of suburbia, when they, cut down an area it's not like they could go live in the neighboring forest there's already animals there so there'll be competition so either they'll die or they'll have to kill other animals for that spot because animals have a very and and plants have a very good way of adapting to their space so when you take that away from them they're not going to be able to just squeeze tighter they're already figured out the best efficient way to squeeze exactly. so humans on the other hand with the runaway resources we have we just um we don't really factor that in, and in the long run, we're really damaging ourselves, too. I mean, a lot of this is just a giant suicide mission that's just taking a very... It's the slowest suicide, but that's really what it is. Um, I, uh, I don't know if I have much more to say. Do you have anything more to say before we get on in there, and we're going to actually walk Not the pipeline? Much, but we're going to walk yeah. through forest where some of the trees are 120 years yeah. old. Okay. And so forth. And, yeah. uh, Here, get it. Get me... Um, I'm going to... So I'm 15 miles today and I'm still full of energy <laughs> so you know because this stuff I think I'm working with the, the earth and the uh, life energy is out here I can feel it I can feel it while I walk I'm being encouraged along um, we have many allies humans we we just have to be open to them and open to their energy and they take care of us I was foraging along the way eating this that and the other I'm learning new things to forage every week um, and there's just, there's this breeze, there's this nice colors that are good for me to see. I'm out in the world, I feel good. Um, I'm not too nervous in front of video when I usually am. So, um, yeah, so we're going to go do this pipeline and honor the land that is still here. And maybe it'll be here indefinitely. It won't be threatened by the pipeline. But right now it is under threat because of the dirty ways that we are uh, in the United States and the larger planet. So... Uh, that's it from me, Fairfax. Um, thank you for being here and taking part in this journey of mine to go along the pipeline. Absolutely. I'm glad to, yeah. that we could dovetail. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I will stop it now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how do I stop? Oh, finish.